today's webinar, Building a Dynamic Network Infrastructure with Open, Programmable, and Scalable Building Blocks, sponsored by Lanar Electronics. Before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. On the left-hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can type your question into the Q&A box and submit them to our speakers. All questions will be saved, so if we don't get to answer you, we may follow up via email. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow Help widget. Here you can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download in the green Resource List widget. But at the end of today's presentation, we'll ask you for your feedback. A survey will pop open on your screen and will only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available about one day after the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I would now like to turn the event over to Heavy Readings Analyst at Large, Simon Stanley. Simon? Thank you, and hello from me as well. And for this webinar today, I'm delighted to welcome uh, three speakers. Um, first of all, we have Javier Hare, who is Telco Cloud Manager at Telecom Argentina. Javier, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and Telecom Argentina. Uh, thank you, Simon. Um, yes, I, I am a Telco Cloud Manager in, in, in Telecom Argentina. I have been in the CSP and um, ICT industry for more than 20 years, working in tech strategy, architecture, design, planning, and operation of network and services. Um, currently, I am working in, in, in Telecom Argentina, and uh, I have also worked uh, for Cablevision Argentina, Verizon, and Justel Spain, that now is part of Orange and one other company. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, next, we have Rajiv Papnaja, who is uh, Senior Vice President uh, and Global Head of Network Services at Prodapt. Um, Rajiv, would you just say a few words about yourself? Thanks, thanks, Simon. Great to be on this panel today. Um, Rajiv Papneja, Head of Network Services and Network Cloudification Practice at Prodap, based out of Washington, D.C. Okay, great. And then finally, we have uh, Sven Freudenfeld, who is CTO, Telecom Applications Business Unit with LANA. Uh, Sven. Yeah, thanks, Simon, and thanks for everyone to join. Um, I'm uh, currently with uh, Lana Electronics, the uh, PTO fo focusing on uh, telecom applications, uh, the telecom applications for you. Um, I've been with uh, Lana for the last four years and spent most of my time in telecom over, over uh, 25 years. Thank you. Okay, great. Right, well, we're going to start today's presentation with a short introduction from me. Before I hand over to Javier, who will take a look at challenges for service providers deploying open disaggregated solutions. Next, Rajiv will discuss integrating open programmable solutions into current network infrastructure and greenfield deployments. And then Sven from Nano will review underlying technologies for disaggregated programmable networks before concluding with some use cases leveraging open programmable infrastructure. During the webinar, there will be two polling questions, and at the end, there will be a Q&A session. And I do encourage you to take part in the polls and send in any questions for you have for our speakers as we go through. Now, we're seeing a significant transition towards disaggregated networks, taking advantage of network virtualization, open solutions, and standard server-based platforms. These new network solutions use modular and decomposed systems with cloud and software-based functions. This approach works across wireless access networks with functions such as virtual EPC, wired broadband with virtual broadband network gateways, and also cable networks with virtual converged cable access platforms. Network disaggregation is supported by many open network solutions, such as OpenRAN for wireless radio access networks. These, solution, see, these network solutions include open APIs between virtual functions and are supported by open ecosystems. In these disaggregated networks, virtual systems are running on white box server-based hardware that may be in large data centers, in edge loca computing locations, or deployed as customer premise equipment. 
The management of these complex disaggregated networks is being made easier by the deployment of network automation solutions. Alongside network disaggregation, there is a consolidation of workloads into server-based platforms. These solutions include universal CPE, SD-WAN, virtualized or open RAN, multi-access edge computing platforms, virtualized CDN, and industry 4.0 hubs and gateways. Successful examples of disaggregation and workload consolidation include SD-WAN and universal CPE. SD-WAN has been widely deployed, delivering significant benefits to service providers and enterprise customers. SD-WAN allows enterprise users to optimize and effectively manage their network connections to the internet, cloud services, and remote locations. SD-WAN also allows service providers to deliver flexible and cost-effective WAN services. SD-WAN services can be deployed as virtual network functions using network virtualization or cloud-native functions using containerized services. The SD-WAN functions together with related functions including virtual firewall, virtual router, intrusion protection services, virtual private networks, and virtual switching can then be flexibly deployed using server platforms in the service provider data center, edge computing platforms, or UCPE systems. In each case, the consolidated workloads that are deployed on each of these platforms use shared resources delivering a more cost-effective solution. The result is a dynamic network infrastructure that is using open, programmable, and scalable building blocks to deliver flexible services across wireless networks and other access networks, including broadband and cable. Network connectivity is needed for residential and business unit users with a variety of devices from mobile phones to laptops and TVs, and also many IoT devices, including connected cars and industrial systems. These network services are increasingly being provided through disaggregated networks, with functions dynamically deployed at the customer premise, telco edge, telco cloud, or public cloud, depending on the level of service required and the availability of processing cap capacity and capabilities. This last chart from me is taken from a survey of service providers that we ran late last year looking at edge computing. This particular question asks, what virtual functions are you considering at the edge? By implementing virtual functions at the edge, service providers can deliver reliable, low latency services and spread application loads across edge and centralized server resources. At the top of, sorry, at the, top of the chart is VRAN with 63% of respondents saying this is being considered for deployment at the edge. And then close behind are the other areas we'll also be talking about in this webinar, including broadband network gateways, virtual EPC, content delivery networks, and virtual or universal CPE. So I'm now going to hand over to Javier, who's going to look at the challenges for service providers deploying open disaggregated solutions. OK. Thank you again, Simon, and I would like to also thanks to Rajiv and Sven for this uh, joint work and the audience for 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 your time. Uh, let's just start uh, uh, reviewing the what is the CSP current scenario. Today, most CSP compete for similar services with lowest competitive advantage and revenues. These revenues are becoming flattened and TCO increased by significant infrastructure deployment to manage the traffic growth. This traffic comes from uh, the digital disruptors who are responding to dynamic consumer demand based on the combination of platform, experience, and cost, which is uh, uh, the typical disruption formula. In the past five years, the telco industry has been one of the worst performing sectors for investors. Many companies have huge debt and are under the pressure to invest in 5G and full fiber networks. And as you can see, on the other hand, uh, hyperscaler are scoring higher revenues. And in the in the picture at the bottom, um, we have another way to see the same. In this case, combining aspects as 
company's value over EBITDA, a return of capital, and considering also the NPS. The best solution uh, in this picture, uh, the best, sorry, the best position in this picture is the is the upper right quadrant where hyperscale are, and the worst situation is the lower left quadrant where the, these uh, uh, six CSP examples and the average are. The bubbles size represent the NPS. Again, much much better for hyperscale than for CSP. If traditional operators don't try a different strategy, they will lose additional value in the market, and the consequences will be similar to many historical examples of the erupted company. Based on that, CSPs need a, a structural or, or need a structural transformation to be able to compete in this new world. But what does this transformation mean? This transformation for CSP means to become DSPs, digital service providers. In this presentation, we use the Martin Kleiner uh, uh, definition related to DSP because we think it's one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, uh, about this topic. Let me let me read it. Um, the the digital service provider are those capable of responding to meet changing demand of consumers, adopting and being part of larger ecosystem based on much more complex business models also offering not only connectivity, but also a wide spectrum of digital and agile products and services, those increasing, uh, um, the increasing value for the end customer and partner and all, of course, uh, uh, shareholders. So, um, uh, basically, the DSP are more service than infrastructure-centric company. In the other end, we have the dump pipe companies. But this transformation, uh, as, as we mentioned, is, is, mentioned is, is, is structural. It has four main pillars, being the most important, the new business strategy definition based on a holistic uh, uh, vision about the desired destination. We also have to adapt people and culture, processes and technology. Let's talk uh, about the disaggregation. As we have mentioned it in the previous, uh, in the previous slide, um, traditional operators need to go through a structural change to remain competitive and have uh, the organizational adaptability required in this new, very dynamic world, the fourth industrial revolution world. They need to offer competing new services, optimizing their time to market and TCO. One key aspect to enable this objective is the disaggregation. It promises accelerate uh, innovation and type to market to be able to compete in, in, in the new context and helping to become and helping the, the operator to become DSP. Also promises reducing the TCO in the medium term. Disaggregation decouples the innovation at hardware and software layer and also within the uh, software component based on principles such as, for example, service oriented architecture. This permits independent and, and overall much faster innovation cycle, higher competency, uh, lowering the entrance barrier, avoid vendor, lock, avoid vendor lockings, and in the end, open architectures and framework based on, on best of breed um, functional blocks. In this manner, operators can build and deploy the new required services and products in the market in the time that consumers are expecting to have them. However, disaggregation and generally speaking, being able to be more service-centric companies have also challenges. Rashid will explain this in detail, but I would like to mention some of them. When we disaggregate, we have to reintegrate the component, which can be a non-trivial uh, task because interoperability has to be achieved, including functional blocks, APIs, data and information model, just to mention some of them. Additionally, we need uh, management and orchestration functionalities to handle the, the, the new deployment uh, life cycle for both uh, each, of, uh, each of the components and the sales and products end to end. This means working with programmability and automation, rapidly just responding to consumer demands to adapt or design new services and products and having process based on XOP uh, with uh, CI, CD, CT, pipeline. Finally, the roadmap of uh, uh, 
life cycle management for those disaggregated components, services, and products uh, uh, that were already deployed should include achieving in, in the middle to long term the closed loop based on technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence. Therefore, simplifying completely the operation and responding in real time or maybe almost real time to any uh, issue in production. So uh, all these all, all these aspects have a huge impact in the uh, operator's PMO or present mode of operation from a technology, process, a skill, culture perspective. You can see in the picture on the right side of the slide an example related to NFV about different disaggregation levels from a completely monolithic system to a fully open one, together with the advantage and challenge of, of, of each one of these setups. This conclusion is not only valid for the for I mean for, for, for the NFP scenario, but they apply to any any scenario making the disaggregation journey. In fact, it then will detail this aspect for for example for the specific case of SD1. Um, let's talk about the initiative fragmentation. Um, to make things more complicated when CSP decide to embrace the transformation to DSPs and as part of uh, of, it, uh, of this disaggregation, they the and a part of it or of this journey, the disaggregation, they they find a very complex scenario from the industry point of view. This is just an example based on a picture from the Linux Foundation working about the initiative fragmentation and proliferation. On the right side of the slide, you can see SDO or SDOs or a standardization body, which also have many initiatives within them. To achieve the disaggregation premises, there is a need of agreement and consensus in the industry about how the disaggregated architecture, framework, functional blocks, APIs, data, and information model will interoperate, how we can manage the, the life cycle, and reach the levels of programmability and automation required, uh, 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 and finally, how to deploy the closed loop feature that we uh, mentioned in previously. Today, with so many initiatives, there is again an, import, an important fragmentation. Many of them are not coordinated with the scope that sometimes overlap, definition diverge, evolution path not integrated between them, and a lack of a holistic industry vision. This is a big issue, and it affects a slowing down the disaggregation itself, the promises and the transformation to, to DSP is we see the, the big picture. Regardless, again, Rajiv and Sven will show us some proposals to deal, uh, to deal with, with these issues. It, it, as we can see in this slide, also in the case of new business opportunities and technological domains such as the edge, the initiative fragmentation and proliferation is also present. This is a demonstration that this issue is not only big and critical, but also structural. DSP still have the, the, the dispute uh, we have been describing along this presentation. They didn't perform the transformation to the DSP. Additionally, there is uh, not a clear consensus and reference architecture or framework for, uh, for this domain to facilitate the disaggregation and the associated uh, advantage. In fact, some initiatives uh, have already failed. Probably everybody knows the, the case of uh, the edge gravity. However, there are some attempts in the, in, in the right direction, such as uh, Telco Edge Cloud Platform, which I personally think is one of the most interesting initiatives and covers some structural aspects, since they are working closely with SDOs and open source proposals. Let's see how it evolves, but they are cooperating, collaborating, co-innovating and creating collective value. But uh, uh, given the issue described previously, many CSP are doing agreement with hyperscalers because they have the agility, innovation framework and framework that the CSP were not able to achieve or, or build. Just to finish uh, this part of the, of, of, of the webinar, we can say that Today, the industry is doing effort in the right direction. 
but they are still not enough. I am uh, not unaware of some progress, but in order to make the transformation that we need, we are still far from a collaborative environment which facilitates innovation, opening the door to, to, to new players. And at the same time, simplifying the integration of the Lego blocks to achieve the business of Shetty. Uh, again, innovation cycle, time to market, and TCO optimization, allowing competition at the right uh, at the right time, at the right time, and in the in the right way. And we can use for 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 this a, a, met, a metaphor for from the sport about how competition is, for example, in tennis versus cycling. To summarize. Initiative fragmentation, proliferation, and lack of consensus are, a, are a still a big issue that have consequences in the that have consequences in the final results we are achieving as, in, as industry, in general and, and and as operators in particular. As this chain uh, shows, there is a domino effect in the outcomes, and the and in the end, we can be at the opposite side of what we were looking for. Uh, now, Simon will propose us a quick poll uh, about this first part of the webinar, and afterward, Rashid will dig deeper uh, on the described challenges and how reintegration using accelerators are seen as catalysts. Thank you, Javier. And that brings us to our first poll, and uh, what we'd like to ask you is how important is this aggregation for the transition to the digital service provider? Um, I've, we've given you uh, five options. Uh, please just uh, select one of them. Uh, the first one being critical, uh, needing open and best of breed architectures and frameworks. Second one is important. Uh, maybe you think it's not important. Um, and then the fourth one is depends on each CSP. So it may depend on, on the CSP individually. And then finally, if you're not sure or don't know, um, then that's the last option. Uh, as I say, please uh, make one selection. Uh, just to remind you that the webinar will be available within uh, 24 to 48 hours. So if you want to come back again, or if any of your colleagues were unable to join us today, then that will be available. Um, so we've got some results coming in. I'll be able to go to these in a few minutes. If you haven't voted already, then uh, please do so. And once you've voted, if you've got any questions for Javier on this first section, then uh, please send that in and we'll get to as many of the questions as we can at the end in the Q&A session. Okay, so we've got some results come in now. I'm going to push these onto your screen. That should come up. And we can see uh, actually uh, just over 40% have gone for critical and 40% uh, for important. So that's well over 80% going for those two. I'm just wondering, Javier, does that sort of reflect what you're seeing elsewhere? Well, uh, it's something that uh, uh, don't surprise me. Uh, I mean, more than 80% of, of the people is considered important or critical. And uh, another, I mean, 90% is including the, depending on each uh, CSP. So in some way, some people, uh, yeah. We'll consider within this uh, 12 uh, percent that 12.5 percent that is important, depending of each uh, CSP, and uh, some people uh, is, is unsure or not know. But nobody says it's not important. You know, it's uh, something that uh, for, it's not surprising for me because uh, uh, personally, I think that is a a, a, a key part of the, of this journey from from to become a DSP and be able to offer um, the services and product that our customer are demanding in the time and in the way they they, they expect. Okay, great. And um, as Javier said, we're now going to go on to Rajiv, who's going to talk about integration challenges. Thank you so much, Simon, and, and again, appreciate this panel, right, and the topic is dear to my heart as well, and I'm, I'm also not surprised to see the poll results, Simon, to be honest, because this is what we are seeing across the industry as we engage with telcos, right, and, and Javier pointed out very nicely that disaggregation, openness, programmability is definitely sought after, right, 
but it brings challenges to the surface. And these challenges, we look at it two ways. One coming from perception, right? And the, the other one is coming from experience. If you're already experiencing, like I saw the poll, uh, some of the, some of the attendees are telling us that based on the CSVs, uh, capability to embrace, uh, disaggregation. So that tells us that there is an experience factor that's coming in as well from the CSPs that how much of disaggregation that I can consume, right? And, and the, the, the reality is that hyperscalers are making, um, you know, benefit, are realizing benefit from disaggregation. And we also saw some graphs that Javier talked about. So with disaggregation, few things must happen, right? We need to reintegrate, we need to uh, consume bare metal hardware, we need to bring in the software components, and depending upon the use cases that you have where you're bringing disaggregation to the table, disaggregation to bear in your networks, uh, we bucketize the challenges under, and, and as we call like 10 dimensions, uh, interoperability, standards not being clearly defined, integration challenges depending upon those open interface that we talked about. TM Forum defines a lot of open APIs. SC defines a lot of um, interfaces that are necessary to, to consume the menu uh, effectively. End-to-end -end QoS, how do I guarantee quality of services to my customers? And if you look at some of the use cases like SD-WAN, which uh, Sven will talk about, and when operators are looking at SD-WAN as a disaggregation candidate where the, the CP is coming from one vendor, the VNFs or the CNFs uh, are coming from another vendor, WAN acceleration engine is coming from another vendor, voice and so forth. So we are dealing with complex validation metrics. So that becomes a paramount challenge of disaggregation for operators to make those permutation and combination work work towards, uh, you know, consumer requirements. The other big thing when we look at the telco cloud in generality or when we are embracing open RAN um, type of, uh, we look at the O&M becoming the big challenge, right? When uh, the hypercompute infrastructure talking to the virtualized rate layer and the cloud management layer, the, the correlation of the alarms coming from those stacks become very challenging, right? And what is that ready, ready for service model? So that becomes another challenge that when do I certify my service for my customer, right? And if anything go down or, or go bad in the service, you know, who do I call? Is it the managed service provider who, who steps in and take care of all the vendors involved or the CSP himself, uh, themselves are responsible? So depending upon what use cases uh, we are consuming, or what use cases we are looking at from disaggregation perspective, any of these dimensions of uh, you know, challenges that we see across the telcos that we are working with become very, very critical to solve. So how, how, do, we, how do we minimize the complexity of disaggregation? Um, and, and as we all know, and I'm sure the audiences that are attending this webinar are experiencing uh, on their daily jobs that when you look at uh, best of breed stack, you're looking at uh, you know a lot of challenges which are coming from the integration points and a lot of manual configurations are needed. So the idea here is that I need to minimize human to machine interaction. Uh, we need to build accelerators. We call them accelerators, but rather they are tooling. And these toolings help us to shrink wrap uh, the best of breed stack that brings uh, multi-vendor, multi-layer stacks that we have to embrace, and we hide the multiple vertical layers and transform a best of breed stack to look like a full stack solution, which are easy to integrate into our legacy or next generation OSS, BSS stacks, right? We need to build technology and vendor agnostic zero to one templates, right? They zero to one templates uh, build single pane of glass to visualize these stacks. And this single pane of glass, we'll talk about uh, in in a couple of slides uh, downstream in this in this presentation. And the important thing there is that depending upon the use case, my single pane of glass should help us or our customers visualize all the parameters that are important for the services. And 
And the right thing is also how do I make uh, these, um, you know, the CI CD pipeline that we are talking about, how do I make it reusable, right? How do I make my network adapters that are coming from different orchestrators, how do I standardize those? How do I use latest technologies and simplify the network function deployments? So those are the things that we, we put it under the bucket of, of shrink wrap. Now, how are we achieving this? So, so what we realize is that um, you know, there are different uh, software vendors that are coming with different solutions. There are different um, OEM vendors for bare metal. They are coming with their solutions. And so we, we started putting together an open virtual exchange uh, beginning of this year. And uh, the idea there was to launch a shrink wrap, which will bring together a full stack deployment, will bring the automation engine, uh, the intelligent RCA capabilities. And the idea was that, simply put, we have over a period of time developed accelerators, which we want to uh, standardize for a customer's environment. And these are automation engines, which work across physical, virtual and cloud native infrastructure to automate the complete life cycle of services onboarding. We have also developed vendor agnostic single pane of glass for SD-WAN, for private 5G services or private LTE services that removes the dependence from vendor specific technical digital self-care portals, right? And we will see some of the business benefits that those SPOCs are bringing. We have also developed um, the analytic service bench, which allows for easy correlation to deliver faster root cause analysis in a best of breed stack. So I take example here at the bottom of the screen, uh, for instance, for SD-WAN services, and we are working with some of the DSPs at various stages of new SDN services rollout from day one to day two, to day end, be it 5G LTE enterprise, networks, or as the van, for instance, we work with them writing requirements, uh, tightening of the interfaces, tightening of the deployments, um, you know, testing the packaging before it's rolled out in, in public environment or uh, production environment. We help them select the right industry benchmark solutions. What is those parameters that one needs to look at to turn on a site activation. So those are the benchmarks that we are looking to work with them to minimize the rollout of best of breed disaggregation platforms, be it uh, you know, simplifying the MAC fees uh, that are needed for day two operations, um, the, the analytics that you're getting from the services, how we make the experience of the customer better when those multi-vendor best of breed solutions are deployed. Uh, I, I take an example of this shrink wrap, right, that, that, I, that I talk about, right? On the left side, you see a full stack uh, from a telco operator environment where there is an operator OSS, there's a ticketing system, and then you have the vendors involved, you have the customer who is using such of a best of breed services. So what are those reference points that I need to prepare to simplify the adoption of this aggregation framework, right? And the first one is the SPOC portal that I mentioned earlier. Now, the single pane of glass portal uh, has two flavors, right? So one is for the ops people coming from the telco organization, which will standardize the management and hiding the complexity of the NBI configuration that comes from multiple, multiple vendors of uh, solutions. And the second one is the customer self-service portal. This is where we, we intend to create differentiation because if we take example of SD-WAN uh, and if we end up using um, a single vendor uh, GUI or single vendor portal and we expose that to the customer, the differentiation uh, for every telco becomes a challenge that how do I differentiate an SD-WAN one, uh, SD-WAN uh, vendor portal against the other SD-WAN portal. So the intent is the, SD, uh, the SPOC portal will create uh, that layer which hides the dependency on a third party um, you know, SD-WAN solutions. The other p big piece here is the automation and the service catalog, right? This, this catalog is where 
we are attempting to reduce man-to-machine communication, right? We are, we are increasing the machine-to-machine -machine communication where the requests that are coming from the user through the self-service portal could trickle down through an automated fashion and those services could be implemented faster, thus saving cost on telcos to get their uh, knock operation or data operation teams involved. The, the multi-vendor um, activation and the abstraction layer, which is highlighted by the B reference point, um, this capability basically spares the northbound actor the complexity and the variations of per vendor service and resource configurations. Um, the last but not least, I wanted to also highlight the business benefits that we have realized by enabling such a single pane of glass uh, portal. Uh, and, and when we are reviewing some of the RFPs that are coming from end customer or end consumers who want to deploy SD-WAN at a larger scale, um, you know, one of the requirements they are putting forth is that we need a self-care uh, technical portal and we don't want to be dependent to provision my policy changes, my cloud connectivity, my priorities of traffic, my application detection, they want to take the ownership of that. And, and from Telco's perspective also, there is a benefit that you are basically delegating uh, the task of provisioning that you do uh, on day two configuration changes are basically delegated to the customer. And what we have seen uh, on the right uh, top um, you know, corner if, if you're receiving the call center, um, you know, calls are coming in, we, we have done some analysis and the savings are humongous, um, you know, by implementing such a technical self-care portal. And I also list uh, some of the features that we have implemented and our telco customers are asking us to implement in such kind of single pane of glass portal, be it profiles, uh, changes, policies, objects, which are addresses, address group, controlling the traffic, enabling firewall policies, the visualization and logging and deploying both changes and so forth. And on the right side of the table, I list some of the analysis that we have done and the level of time savings that are reflecting to the savings that to the self-service portal is offering like 60 cents uh, versus the $12. So these are the savings that we are driving for each configuration row item that I mentioned in, in the feature column. So those are the things that we, we bring together uh, through the string trap, which is the automation um, accelerators, the analytics accelerators, which are geared towards in experience improvement and so forth. And last but not least, uh, bringing all together through the single pane of glass where the disaggregated components and multi-layer components can be managed in harmony to achieve and to simplify the complexity that uh, you know some of those things that uh, Javier Javier mentioned earlier. So this is the last slide of my section. Back to you, Simon. Okay, thank you, Rajiv. And that brings us to our second poll. And in this case, what we'd like to ask you is, what is the biggest challenge in deploying disaggregated solutions? Do you feel it's interoperability, solution integration, scalability, or programmability? Once again, uh, please select one option and uh, submit your vote. And uh, please keep sending in the questions. We've got a few questions to get to at the end of the webinar, but uh, if you've got any questions on what Rajiv was talking about, um, then please send in those questions now. So see if we've got some, if have some results coming in. We have a few results coming in. Uh, if you haven't voted yet, then uh, please do so. Um, we'll go to the results in a few moments. Okay, so I think we can go to the results now. They should be appearing on your screen. And as you can see, um, more than 50% uh, have gone for interoperability, uh, followed by solution integration as being the two biggest challenge in deploying disaggregated solutions. Uh, Rajiv, is, is that what your customers are telling you? 
Yes, absolutely, Simon. And I'm so glad to see that this poll results uh, shaped up this way because if scalability and programmability would have been higher, then I would have commented that that's coming for perception. But I think interoperability and solution integration, that what we are seeing is definitely coming from experience. And this is where those minimizing uh, the machine to man to machine um, communication plays a role that I could automate some of the onboardings uh, of VNFs or CNF uh, solutions and how do I shrink wrap to hide these complexities that are coming from mostly man-to-machine communication and, and, and solution integration is definitely a candidate to be improved there. Okay, great. Well, thanks for Back taking you. part in those uh, poll questions. And we're now going to go to Sven for the last section of the webinar. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Simon. So um, uh, there was a very good summary from uh, Javier and uh, from Rajiv uh, in terms of the, uh, the trend in the uh, requirements, uh, what we see <clears throat> coming from the service provider community uh, or di digital service providers uh, in the world. Um, we, um, <clears throat> we are on the tail end of the seminar uh, primarily because uh, we're, we're underlaying technology in order to support this digital transformation uh, is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the hardware infrastructure. So meaning that uh, capable platforms which can sustain uh, the, the, the openness and the programmability uh, for the network infrastructure. So we have been working uh, in creating a white box for deploying disaggregated solutions in the network. Uh, uh, initially, <clears throat> four years ago, started with the universal CP and uh, and uh, SD1 deployments. This is, has been peaking for the last two years. Uh, we see an uptake in, in live deployments uh, in the network, and we have learned quite a bit by <clears throat> by running these uh, programs um, because there are uh, uh, different changes in the mentality of deploying SD1 in universal CPEs, either through a managed service provider um, or even a service provider directly. So. Um, the hardware is most of the time an afterthought um, because uh, the perception is it should be uh, 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 the lowest cost in the equation uh, in order to deploy it. But reality is these platforms are not your standard service what you, what you use at home or what you deploy in a, in a standard data center. These platforms and appliances are dedicated to, uh, to ensure uh, security for network security manageability uh, for the uh, remote locations for zero-touch provisioning, and also the uh, infrastructure support for LTE and Wi-Fi potentially. So we have done a significant um, investment for creating white box appliances, as we call it, uh, from uh, small, medium, large, and extra large uh, um, uh, options, uh, which are ready for deployment, which means that these platforms are enabled uh, to uh, do uh, instant deployment for LTE in the network with full certification. But also we have done some uh, validation with uh, a partner ecosystem which are running some of the uh, universal CPE framework for the orchestration with uh, different VNFs from different vendors. The challenge here is <clears throat> that um, uh, the platform itself uh, only has so many resources available from from a compute uh, uh, from a compute perspective, memory, uh, storage, and so on. So uh, ultimately, the the challenge is here that uh, some of the applications may be fighting over resources in order to be deployed. And um, when it comes down to a multi-vendor uh, solution, um, as a white box, the intent is to be able to do zero-touch provisioning and initialize uh, any services um, whenever I need it. Um, but uh, of course, uh, it requires the, the framework uh, to do that, especially for zero-touch provisioning. Um, the uptake we've seen, with, uh, especially with COVID-19, uh, is that um, uh, the track role will be reduced from service providers, and the intent is to to uh, remote provisioning, remote management, and, and zero-touch provisioning. So therefore, um, it's a very important aspect to look at the underlying infrastructure to support 
what Rajiv has been highlighted in the terms of a shrink wrap uh, solution. So SC1 is the initial step. Um, we have done uh, uh, significant deployments, um, and, and as I said, you know we we have uh, live solutions on the enterprise side uh, today. Uh, we're moving towards the next general, next level of uh, disaggregated network. And the next level of disaggregated networks, it's really around the 5G deployment, <clears throat> moving from a baseband, uh, baseband unit by disaggregating a, a, a centralized unit and a distributed unit. These are typically um, intended to be white boxes, uh, software agnostic, so multiple applications can run and share the resources on the platform, but they have some specific requirements, and in particular, for synchronization, uh, provision time protocol, uh, or 1588 support on the distributed unit. And also there is a, a certain size limitation, um, uh, which are in effect in order to support that. So we have been working and building appliances dedicated for that, um, which can then also scale. Uh, you know, normally on the 5G network infrastructure, the uh, distributed unit usually will host a, uh, an acceleration, acceleration unit uh, or a coprocessor, which could be, in some cases, an FPGA, field programmable, but also could be a, a, a graphics processor, like a GPU. Um, so these platforms are, need to be able to um, allow programmability. And you know, uh, one aspect of programmability is from the net networking aspect. So we, you know, building this platform to enable um, uh, interfaces like P4, P4 programmability for the networking aspect. And that's a key element uh, for the rollout for 5G um, in combination with, of course, uh, the infrastructure for zero-touch provisioning, manageability, and, and, and so forth. Um, and it goes throughout the, the network. Uh, infrastructure. So we talked about SD1, universal CPs on the enterprise side, which is now reflecting over towards the, uh, uh, the open run of a, a radio access network infrastructure, separating distributed units from centralized units, um, but also um, enabling the, the programmability aspect on that. And the fact is that at the edge of the network, it's the most dynamic traffic flow. Uh, it's not a static um, network configuration where I set a networking path and I'm done with it for a while until I have to change it. No, in fact, the edge uh, of a network is really the, uh, uh, the most dynamic where we have to separate traffic flows based on the incoming traffic, either if it's IoT traffic or mobile traffic or what have you. So that's an, uh, that's an aspect where the underlying infrastructure need to support that in order to potentially go to the level, as Rajiv was saying, um, creating self-serve self portals. Uh, the underlying technology is NFV and STN, meaning fully software-defined, uh, fully manageable of all the different resources in the network, um, and, and then providing the scalability. So, and we see this uh, becoming an uptake on that. So, uh, uh, most of the uh, open run um, uh, companies are really focusing primarily on the software um, to, uh, to uh, untie the dependency on a single vendor solution. The, um, another aspect is when we look at the service provider edge, there are uh, new use cases and applications going to be rolled out uh, for, um, <clears throat> for deployment. And as I said, the track roll today for the service provider is the most costly um, aspect for that. So therefore, NRV and SDN becomes an underlying framework. But that means that we have everything to be into a sort of a white box approach where I can uh, have multiple applications coexist on the same physical hardware, but also can scale. Uh, and that scalability comes in with the programmability on the network, uh, the scalability comes in with, um, with uh, you know, a deploying uh, instant uh, applications like uh, uh, Visual Firewall, Visual BNG, Visual Broadband Network Gateway, as well um, potentially other applications. So we, what I mentioned uh, earlier, the firewall of the Visual BNG is really the underlying um, infrastructure in order to deploy the applications. 
And if you have a uh, fully in, in integrated network infrastructure sort of a mini data center at the edge to be able to manage it remotely, to be uh, reconfiguring uh, whenever you need it, but also to provide a, a surf portal, that will be um, reducing the overall operations cost for the, the service provider. This model here is an example of a multi-dwelling unit where multiple of these white box appliances are residing in a telco closet in some of the uh, of the buildings. What that means is, so we're building, we, we're providing the resources as the hardware vendor, typically. We are also providing the manageability framework. That means, imagine you have a rack of servers and they need to all be all physically connected with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a cable. Um, we have that fully integrated. We're providing the uh, uh, programmability framework for network programmability using T4. We're using uh, the Intel Barefoot Tofino as one of the uh, open programmable ASIC, so not a uh, proprietary uh, purpose-built ASIC, um, so it's open and programmable. We're teaming up with uh, companies who, uh, who can leverage that uh, framework uh, for the full deployment, for the network operating system, for load balancing, but also for applications like the virtual um, BNG applications uh, which are firewall and so on. So this is becoming really an agnostic white box, scaling multiple applications, and then uh, bringing that uh, into a deployment using STM framework and analytics as well. So we can, um, what we hear from the, in the beginning from Javier is that artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning is becoming a big aspect for the deployment for the digital service providers. So these tools we build into the white box including in, uh, inbound network telemetry and other use, um, other um, technology will allow to collect data of a network right at the edge where we need it to make a smart decision on how I route my traffic to my next available resources. So that's the whole concept uh, around that. And we've been working with a team at, uh, at Product um, and our ecosystem uh, partners um, to um, bring the scalability to the market. And this is just really one example on how we can scale um, and reduce the overall uh, cost for operations um, by using an SDN framework uh, fully integrated uh, by working with um, our partners uh, uh, as, as product um, to really uh, give a leverage uh, for the openness uh, in the network. And this is just an example on, you know, what are the advantages and the cost savings by bringing that to the market, um, by, you know, building an ecosystem and have uh, the te underlying technology which allows uh, all these uh, characteristics for the service provider community for programmability, scalability, and, and what have you. So this is really the, the takeaway on that by, you know, you when you uh, start moving towards a disaggregated network, you need to look at, you know, what are the underlying technology available? You know, how do I integrate this, um, you know, into the overall network? Not every deployment is a greenfield deployment. There might be some brownfield deployment moving gradually to a, a transition mode. Um, and how we, you know, how to bring this uh, uh, to, to um, uh, live consumption um, in a short period of time. So, so that's really summing that up um, and the takeaway, uh, what will be a benefit to any service provider um, who is looking at moving in the direction of disaggregating the network and being more open uh, and agnostic. With that, uh, I'm bringing it back to you, Simon. Thank you, Sven, and uh, that uh, brings us to an end of the presentation portion of the webinar, so thanks for putting that together, guys. Um, and I'd like to open it up for the Q&A session, and we've had uh, several questions come in, so we'll get to those in just a minute. Um, what I'd like, to, oh yes, if you want to send in a question, then please do so, do so via the Q&A widget. Um, but while we're going to the, uh, the questions, uh, I'd just like to push onto your screen a survey. Um, and so as we go through the Q&A, if you could uh, take a few minutes to uh, 
fill out the survey form and uh, once you've completed uh, press submit survey and so while we're doing that we're going to go to the questions and I'd like to start I think with this one uh, which is for Javier um, how does the system sorry how does the service provide a benefit from engaging the ecosystem around an ecosystem of partners Thank you so much. Uh, Javier, are you there? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I was mute. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, uh, well, I, I think it's a good question because it's, it's, it's for. Uh, I think it's, it's one of the of the conclusion of this uh, of of this presentation. Um, I, I think that the, since the industry has not been able to to construct a consolidating a consolidated. A vision about how to deal with these challenges that the, the that uh, uh, the service provider are, are, are facing um, are the the the, the own uh, service provider or operator uh, who has to choose uh, what they think is is the right is the is the right path uh, between uh, many divergent uh, options and then build around this vision the right ecosystem of vendor integrator and and also the 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 core the the, the right internal internal processes for example uh, i have mentioned it, what is related to exops or and, and the related uh, uh, and, and the associated uh, pipeline in order to be able to deal with with this complex uh, scenario uh, uh, of competition that we are living so just to summarize the, the answer, I think uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's very important to, to define this ecosystem. We can ben benefit from this ecosystem. And, and, and uh, I mentioned, just to summarize, for me, there are two aspects. The first aspect is, is, define, is to define the, the, the vision or, 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 or take the definition to choose the, the right uh, path between many initiatives that there are in, in the industry, and the second one is to is to build or select the right partner that will help us uh, to make this vision a, a reality. Uh, so uh, we can benefit about that. We have to work in, in uh, to construct uh, our ecosystem. Uh, our ecosystem is the responsibility of each uh, uh, SP. Uh, the industry has has not been able to solve until today uh, just one one vision and uh, all the people uh, behind that uh, and have the, all the people behind that. So we need to select and construct this ecosystem, and it's, uh, it's critical uh, how we select the what will be the the, the partners that that will be part of this ecosystem. If we um uh, select the right uh, participant i think the benefits are huge uh, as uh, rajiv and sven uh, mentioned in order to to be able to construct this uh, uh, solution or, or wraps or or accelerators and be able to respond to the, our customer demands okay great uh, very comprehensive answer there um so for this next question, uh, we'll perhaps go to Rajiv. Uh, and the question is, uh, how can we shorten time to deployment of disaggregated solutions? Oh, great, great question, um, Simon. So so the way we, we are looking at it and what we are working with our telco customers is, is four-prone strategy, right? The first one is we are working with them to define the vision and set the accountability for all the players involved in a best of breed stack which means that how do i how much time you know we will give to vendors to launch a new feature how many how many days we should launch new releases right and if there are patches and so forth so how do i you know make my par partners who you know Javier is mentioning about different vendors here uh, how do i make them accountable to to achieve the vision that i have the second thing is uh, defining the APIs clearly, correct? The third one is decoupling the use cases from the dependency of the vendor stack solutions that we are having, right? I don't want my use cases to be dependent or driven uh, from different uh, best of breed solutions that we have. 
the last but most important is how do I embrace uh, Net DevOps model in in the disaggregation rollout? Right? How do I build my automated uh, build and deployment CI/CD pipelines, which are reusable across uh, different vendor solutions that I'm getting? So um, this is where you know the declarative paradigm comes handy. Also, and, and so these are the things that we are working uh, with telcos to shorten the time to deploy disaggregated solutions and products. Okay, great. Uh, I think we've got time for maybe one more quick question. So I'll go to Sven for this one. So what are the typical use cases for disaggregated solutions in the network transformation path? So we have seen uh, the, uh, the typical use cases in the enterprise uh, as a starting point. So SD1, uh, universal CPEs with uh, uh, hosting multiple applications, unified communications or enterprise communications, specific applications on that. And that's um, uh, on the uh, customer premise equipment. Um, for the next level, um, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, um, the, uh, uh, the Open Run initiative is really driving the, uh, the use cases for an, an Open Run uh, deployment model. Um, and as I mentioned, there was, you know, typically there are, uh, you know, some partner companies and software companies who specifically uh, create a framework and, and network interfaces for Open Run. And then the third one, which is really the uh, uh, service provider edge. Uh, can ho host multiple applications, and it's it's really a generic trend from all the service providers. Um, Deutsche Telekom has been <coughs> released a, a, a paper recently about uh, looking at an open virtual BNG uh, initiative to have an ecosystem uh, of partners who are who are um, <coughs> operating on a white box model uh, for virtual BNG deployments. Um, but there are others. Um, for example, uh, uh, virtual load balancer or stateful load balancer um, <clears throat> for traffic mitigation and so on. Um, there is a, a partner we've been working with uh, who was leveraging the Tofino uh, ASIC on that. And, um, and then virtual firewall. Um, most of the uh, traditional security companies who ship boxes in the past seeing an uptick in the virtual deployment on that. And, you know, these are uh, residing in the service provider, service provider edge site. And then the applications on top of it. And there could be unified communication, it could be any other application, uh, including virtual CDN, um, which requires low latency. These are all applications which can reside in the service provider edge. Okay, great. Thanks, Sven. And um, I'm afraid we've run out of time, so thank you for attending today's presentation, Building a Dynamic Network Infrastructure with Open, Programmable, and Scalable Building Blocks, brought to you by Light Reading and Lanner Electronics. And on behalf of our speakers today, Javier Hare from Telecom Argentina, Rajiv Papneja from Prodapt, and Sven Freudenfeldt from Lanner, and myself, Simon Stanley, thanks for your time, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.